My talk today, entitled The Institutional Life of Intersectionality, or Notes on Feminist Fatigue, is part of my new book project, which is called Black Feminism Remixed. So what I'm going to do is say a little bit about the big question that I made the project and then get into today's talk. So most years, I travel to two interdisciplinary feminist conferences. Probably some of you go to at least one of these. The National Women's Studies Association Conference, the NWSA, and the American Studies Association Conference, the ASA. So every NWSA conference I have ever attended has focused either implicitly or explicitly on intersectionality. Indeed, the NWSA's mission statement embraces a view of women's studies that is synonymous with intersectionality. According to the organization, the field, and I'm quoting, builds on the feminist scholarship of US and third world women of color and examines how categories of identity like race, class, gender, age, ability, etc., and structures of inequality are mutually constituted and must continually be understood in relationship to one another. End quote. So not only is intersectionality described as women's studies foundation, it is also cast as a kind of aspirational goal. Feminist work should be intersectional to remedy past exclusions and to move toward a feminist future that can account for the complexity and particularity of personhood, identity, subjectivity, injury, marginalization, and processes of domination. So, tall order. At the ASA, which is a conference that's usually a week before or early after NWSA, which is always fun, mm -hmm. um, a conference that has long construed American studies broadly to include what the organization calls American women's studies, Scholars deploy analytics like affect, precarity, and assemblage to move beyond identity politics generally, and to move beyond intersectionality specifically. At ASA, intersectionality is often seen as a paradigmatic identity politic, and black women are often imagined as the paradigmatic identitarian subjects whose imagined insistence on naming injury and insisting on visibility transgresses the anti-identitarian turn American studies has embraced. Leaving intersectionality behind, then, is a crucial part of moving toward a new and more complex feminist future, at least at the ASA. So from these two contradictory experiences emerge the questions that I'm going to make my project, Black Feminism Remixed. <coughs> the project examines how black feminism is imagined by women's studies in two simultaneous and diametrically opposed ways, as a future and as a past. I tell this story through the analytic of intersectionality as it is, I argue, in and through intersectionality, that women's studies complicated relationship with black feminism, its investment in making black feminism past and future is most apparent. <coughs> So in other words, my new project asks how it is possible that intersectionality is imagined both, in Kathy Davis's words, as, quote, a new raison d'etre for doing feminist theory and analysis, and, in Jaspir Puar's words, as a tool of diversity management and a mantra of liberal multiculturalism. And I grapple with how women's studies can sustain and produce this paradox. Intersectionality is interdisciplinary, to put two buzzwords together at once, which is dizzying. And its interdisciplinarity confers value on our discipline. Intersectionality is also a buzzword that easily resonates with colleges and universities' purported interest in diversity, inclusion, and difference, even as many intersection, intersectionality scholars critique what Chandra Mohanty has called the benign variation logic of diversity embraced by so many universities. So in this project, I develop the term the institutional life of intersectionality to capture the fact that intersectionality is no longer exclusively a form of outsider knowledge concerned with capturing experiences of the multiply marginalized, but also an administrative and bureaucratic buzzword aligned with and oftentimes substituted for diversity. Intersectionality is a term increasingly deployed by university administrators to describe institutional missions, departmental strength, pedagogical strategies, and institute building priorities, most notably at Columbia Law School, which now has a Center for Intersectionality and Social Policy Studies. So the point that I'm making is that intersectionality has become a crucial way that women's studies names its institutional value in a moment where being valuable is crucial for staking a claim to one's location in the university. Ultimately, I make use of the term institutional life of intersectionality to capture intersectionality's ubiquity in and beyond women's studies, its ability to traverse still rigid disciplinary 
borders, its ability to traverse the academic and administrative divide, its multiple meanings, and its capacity to signal diversity, all the while being wholly detached from the bodies of multiply marginalized subjects, particularly black women. My focus is on intersectionality's current institutional entanglements in and beyond women's studies, rather than in treating those institutional entanglements as unprecedented. My interest is in thinking about intersectionality's institutional life apart from what I hear as in my book as a defensive stance that has marked many black feminist responses to intersectionality dominance and ubiquity. This defensive stance often insists both on a historical claim that intersectionality originated with black women and a normative claim that intersectionality should relate exclusively to black women's specific experiences of marginalization. In my larger project, I treat this kind of black feminist response to intersectionality's travels as what Sian Nye terms an ugly feeling in her book, Ugly Feelings, one that indexes the place of both black feminist thought and black women in the academy, a position marked by what Rachel Lee terms the contradictory logic of fetishized marginality. I treat this defensiveness as something that animates a conservatism within black feminism, rendering black feminist theory a key participant in the intersectionality wars, a term that I use to describe intensifying and deeply contentious battles over intersectionality's origins, circulations, travels, and meanings. In place of a black feminism that participates in these battles, I seek to animate a black feminism that can radically critique the host of ways that the intersectionality wars always render black women symbols, reducing black female flesh to objects of rescue, saviors, or heroines. And finally, I suggest that both of these analytics, intersectionality and transnationalism, have been constructed by women's studies as remedial, and thus both have been imagined as exhaustible and even exhausting resources. Indeed, the promise and the critiques that circulate around both terms reveal that both are imagined as potentially transformative and potentially tiring in their call for complexity and particularity.